Hello and welcome to Infinity. I've got a set of macros for you free. Just follow the links down below and look for Dave's saturation selection. Because that's it, it's about how to select by using saturation. And saturation goes from grey through to a fully saturated colour. In this case it's red, but could be any of the others. So what you do is when you've gone down the link, you'll will have downloaded, go up here, click on this one, import macros, and then double click on what you've brought in, or even just drag and drop onto it. I think that works these days. And we've got a set of macros here. The top three here we can look at, the bottom one we can look at in another video, because the top three are just increasingly complex. So we'll start with the top one here. And we've run that here, so we've got a layer up here. And it what it does is it takes a copy of the existing layer, which is the top one here, then adds a control to it here, which gives you the controls. So I double click this and this brings up these three controls, middle, width and feathering. To see what I'm doing, I need to turn off the bottom layer or any other layers down here. And then what I've got here selected is a range here based on saturation, not on luminosity, not on colour. So as I move this up and down, it moves down from greys all the way up through to the saturated colour. The width, unsurprisingly, changes the width of this, and the feathering, again, is going to change the feathering of it. So a way to use this is if we go to this one up here, I've got a proper colour, a picture here, let's run this one on it, and we'll open up this, double click on the that one there, you can click here if you like to see that. Then we turn off the bottom layer or layers and we can see what is selected here. And then we can change, look here, we can scan through the picture and, and select by saturation. A way to use this, if I turn the width and feathering down, I can see just a narrow band here. If I wanted to select the area around the sun there, I literally go up and say, it's going to be here from about here down to about here, so I'll put it somewhere in the middle. And then I can play with the width to select that, maybe adjust it again with the middle, and then add some feathering. And then if I turn on the bottom layer, so we can see this again now, don't need this one anymore, select the top layer there and put on HSL. And this is a commonly what you're going to do. I can make that more saturated, but not only that, I can change the colour of it. So I can make it a bit more red. I can change the luminosity a bit, mm, well, maybe not. Uh, all right, and I can go back to this one here and change what that area of selection is. So there you go, that is a way of using this. So you've got before and after. Now then, what else have I got? We've got smart saturation selection and false. So for the smart one, I'm going to use another picture here, which has got four colour wheels. This is just the hue. This is fading to grey. This is fading to white. This is fading to black. And you'll see why in a moment. So I do the smart one here. I've got the same ones, things here, the same first three, but I've got an addition here. I've got some little calculations here. The first one are switches here. Of, or you can switch it to not one, two or three. So one selects all. Let's turn off the bottom layer so you can see what is being selected. And see here we've got a ring here. Because it's set to one, that means it's the grey. So the, the greys here, remember this was whites and blacks down here. So now I've got a band of just in the, the greys or the, um, the, the tones. If I go to zero, the whites and the blacks get selected as well. So these are the tints and the shades. I go to two, it's just with the tints, and I go to three, it's just with the shades. So it gives you a wide range of how it is selected by using different algorithms for calculating. You can also change the feathering. So if I change that, it's a different type of feathering. So that's the, again the calculation that is used. So one is an exponential uh, S-curve, and the, the when it's two, it's a cosine S-curve. 
normally defaults to, to 0, which is a more gentle one. And you can also invert it. So I turn that to a 1, I get the opposite of what is being selected. So that gives you even more control. And finally, let's go back to this one down here. And I'll just turn off that, turn the layer on here, just to show you how this works, which is the full one. So if I click on that, this is an addition again. This is a bit more faff to do it. If I turn the bottom layer off, you can see what is selected because here I just got four points. So if I select just the top one here, I see I'm just stretching that one sideways. It lets you have a different fade for the top and the bottom, which the smart one doesn't because it gives you the same fade either side. So you can see you can just adjust these points here to get different levels of control. And you've also got these additional controls down here. I'll show more examples with this uh, in future videos and also do a separate one on mono selection. But I hope that is very interesting and very useful for you. And thank you very much for watching.